World Radio 1200, South Carolina, standing by. Hey, 38 Las Vegas, I do appreciate the contact with you. We're getting a little West Coast skip. I do appreciate it. Uh, 1200, back to you, 38 in Las Vegas. All right, do appreciate the contact. 38 in Las Vegas, uh, 1200 South Carolina, mobile on 10 watts. I do appreciate it. Well, we're getting to Las Vegas on this old junker. <laughs> What's up, Junior? Pretty nice, pretty nice. It was pretty cool to get uh, 38 in Las Vegas off of this uh, radio. Uh, it still has to be put through the paces here with the uh, you know full alignment and stuff, but it uh, seems to be operating pretty nicely to get into Las Vegas. Very minimal power on this. This is uh, you know not a powerhouse. That's not what it was meant for. I mean, it's uh, it's a powerhouse and the coverage back in the day. Of course, this manual was $15 back when, yes, our buddy, yours and mine, Lou Franklin, from uh, his known publications from CBC International, but of course that was $15 in 1983. And we go ahead and adjust that for inflation in today's dollars from 1983. Yes, this manual would be going for $42.16. <laughs> but it is worth it if you get a radio like this. It is uh, very hit and miss. A lot of guys don't even work on this old stuff. And man, some of the stuff uh, has gone to the wayside. Some of them have just been thrown out. Some of them... Probably could have just needed a little align. Some someone sold them a, a Ranger or something like that. Uh, poof. But yeah, this is still a blind radio, no frequency counter, so it's still back to the old school ways. You gotta have to guess it unless you get. I have that Superstar VFO. I don't know if I want to add it to that because the coverage on that um, it's a via a UFO. I think it's seventeen oh four Superstar. Um, but I added to that, it stops at 28 megahertz. You can get anywhere on the top of that, but you know, then that's an additional piece and everything like that. Maybe I want to put this up on 10 meters so I can ch change out one of the crystals in one of the bands to be able to do that real simple and easy. Right now, this just goes up to 28 to 305, which gets you just a little bit into the voice, but yeah, you change out one of the crystals here. Maybe if I do it on E or D. Yeah, I'd probably do it on the E side because that's the uh, 4 read channels I'd probably want to have um, actually usable because yeah, the uh, the coverage on it isn't the best. But in any regard, it does work. Um, we're getting out, and now it just needs to be put through the paces. And you know, after it recaps, doesn't mean everything is perfect because it could have been a failing cap and someone was tuning this up. Because, yeah, it's a used radio. I got it used. I got it totally not working. You saw that. So, little by little, it's functional. Then, yeah, pull up the old service manual and give it a service. But, yeah, we're just using that uh, courier mic. It's the one I actually have for my neighbor. I have another one. I got Wagon Master. And uh, I have that for the uh, Cobra 148B, which is also a CyberNet. But it doesn't have... FM doesn't have extra bands, just has, well, it has a 60 channel selector, which is kind of cool, and up and low, but it's PLO 2A chip inside, which you all know, as I do. It's in so many, so many, so many radios that were back in the mid-70s to 80s, and man, can that thing open up as long as the radio can handle it. That chip is... You can go anywhere with that thing. It's pretty cool. I like it a lot. 
course, a lot of new channel kits come out, make these kind of obsolete. Everyone wants the new radios and everything like that. But yeah, this got through to Las Vegas. Not a lot of power on this. Still has a clicky relay in it. So if you do have one of these and you want to put a power mic on it, you don't really need to. You can you can change the uh, pots inside. That's the only thing. You do not have voice control. But it is pretty loud. And we're able to get through into Las Vegas. So it's not a terrible radio as far as I'm concerned. It's actually a real, real classic. Especially a Superstar 2000. You don't see many of them around anymore. If you do, they're not in functional operation. Just like when I got this. Some of these models came... 40 channels, A through E. Some models came, as Lou Franklin even said here, that some models, band E is FM, could also have full amateur frequencies, if you change the uh, crystals out. Um, but yeah, they had a 50 channel selector and band A through F. And that helped a lot on the UK FM band because, yeah, you just change your clarifier. Um, I think at 9 o'clock position on this, and then you'd be able to get it. But it's not this. It's the Lafayette series. But like I said, there are so many clones on this radio. And uh, there are so many variations all the way through from boards to channel selectors to crystals this was kind of a plug-and-play radio for whoever wanted to do what with it so I guess it depends on the model Cybernet was known for their uh, different channel selectors they didn't stop at uh, the regular 40 as that uh, 140 uh, 148B did uh, 60 channels this one just does 40, but it has the bands. It doesn't have the FM um, for UK in it. Uh, you can change out crystals and get to it. Of course, you have the quartz unlock slide in it. But yeah, pretty happy with it so far. I'm glad I was able to make contact on it. And uh, yeah, we kind of know it works somewhat. So yeah, it's one step at a time on this one. This is just one of the personal ones I have uh, hanging on to. So. Had to get through a little bit of this stuff, clear it out, get it off my bench so I can t take in some other work. So, all right, 73, see you all in the next one. Appreciate it, sub up, and uh, yeah, we'll play around with this again. We've got some other stuff coming too. 73.